Hello, hello, lovely listeners. All of you ghouls and goblins. And everything in between. Welcome to Across the Veil Ooh. with Zelda. And Emma. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> this is very weird for us because we're in the same room recording this. I can touch your face. I can touch Don't. you. <gasps> <laughs> Things are about to get weird. We have weird energy when we're it's, around each other. <laughs> it just That moment reminded me of in Harry Potter when Voldemort goes... I can touch you now. But yeah, Zelda and I are currently in New Orleans together. She came here for my birthday to surprise me. It was a very long and convoluted process that involved me turning off all of my location services. And uh, it required my friends in New Orleans who knew about it and were lying to Emma. For months. For months. Um, they had to find a box and wrapping paper. So they told Emma to come downstairs and there was a huge box on her front doorstep. Also, side note, I was upstairs working on this very podcast. And so I got the text to come downstairs and I was like, no. I literally said no because I was too focused on editing and I was like, they can fucking bring it up here or some shit mm-hmm. or my roommate can go and get it. But then they were like, no, you have to come get it yourself. And I was like, still not knowing anything. I was like, okay, I'm going to come downstairs. So I'm in the box She's this the box. entire time. So while Emma's being a brat about not wanting to open the present, I so graciously got her for her birthday. <laughs> I am in a box that is not truly person sized. <laughs> but yeah, so I come downstairs and I see the giant box and I was like, oh, what did she do this time? <laughs> what did she get me? And I open it and the first thing I see is blonde hair. And so my first thought was that she sent me a costume to make me look like her, like a blonde wig. And then the blonde wig started to move. <laughs> <laughs> and it was not a blonde wig after all. It was me. Me. It was her! And I was so scared that I actually jumped into the air and screamed. And hit the ground. I did. I hit the fucking deck, man. KO. You were like was, a video game character. I was KO'd. She got me good. And it's still shocking that everybody knew for months and were lying to me for months. Our friends are not good liars. You and I are the best liars no, in our friend group. But it turns out that they actually are good liars. I think they are good omitters instead of liars. That's true. I think that's how we managed to pull it off. I I would talk to them about like wanting Zelda to come visit and would be like, oh my god, I don't know why she's not coming here and I don't like it. And they'd be like, "Mm -hmm." so I guess it just was a mission. (laughs) It was because I remember you calling me once and you're like, you should come to New Orleans. I was like, I don't have any money. (laughs) But it was the best surprise I've ever gotten and the best birthday gift. Aww. Her. Me. A human body. You know, that would be a pretty good birthday gift. A human body. I can confirm. Now I kind of think I know how vampires feel staying in caskets. Yeah, I don't think that they contort themselves like that in their caskets. I think they're pretty, pretty comfy. Yeah, so I'm just saying I go hard. I didn't spend the entire night in there, but it was a good five minutes longer that I was expecting to stay in the box because of the... Because I'm a little bitch. (laughs) Emma, you have to come downstairs. (sighs) Okay. While Zelda's in pain. (laughs) Still good memories. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been very fun being back in New Orleans. We were almost hit by a hurricane, but then we weren't hit by a hurricane. Classic New Orleans, as it's been happening all fucking summer. I go to CVS, I buy a ton of water bottles, expecting to have no clean water, and then nothing happens. Which is a good thing. Which is a good thing. But I love New Orleans just because it's such a cool, spooky place, and I really, I feel like I'm just getting creepier by the minute, you know? One might say it's a grunchy place. Oh, it's the grunchiest place I know. (laughs) If you haven't listened to our grunch episode, I highly suggest you take a little listen. Zelda also got me another gift, which was, it was, it's a blood stone, right? Blood stone, yeah. Because I love crystals and like, I'm not a believer. I don't really think they have like healing powers, but I love them and I think they're so fun. Yeah. And it's just like one of those things that makes me a fake witch. I mean, I consider myself definitely a witchy person. You know, I have like two or 14 crystals, <laughs> um, lots and lots of candles. <laughs> 
<laughs> boxes with pentacles on them. You know, just like casual things casual, to have yeah. in your room. I do too. My entire room looks like a witch's den. I have a bat hanging up. I love him. I got him from Michael's. I would say witch's den is what I would call this room in, in the classiest way possible. But what we're going to talk about today is a little lady who they call the last witch in Scotland. Going back to Scotland. Back to Scotland a second week in a row. <laughs> But before we get into our person of this week, I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory about history, the witches, and the law. So I'm pretty sure most of us know about the witchcraft trials and the persecution of many women uh, in Salem, etc. You've probably read or performed Arthur Miller's The Crucible in high school. I was not cast in that production, but it's okay. I've done pretty well for myself since, <laughs> even though I would have made a very good Abigail. You would. I've been to Salem, and I went during their Halloween festival, and it was so so much fun. That's just good vibes all around. Mm -hmm. Good, good spooky vibes. The law in Britain was called the Witchcraft Act of 1563. So this law was responsible for much of the discrimination surrounding women at the time, but like 200-ish years later, the law was repealed and made into the Witchcraft Law of 1735, which did away with the major crime of witchcraft, whatever that means. W women who are independent are witches, burn them! Burn them! But this new law ended witch hunts and executions on grounds of witchcraft, which Yay! Yay! Don't burn them. But it did replace witchcraft as the major crime to pretending to be a witch or <laughs> pretending to possess supernatural abilities. <laughs> so essentially, it's now a law against fraud. So you could legally be a witch, you could just not pretend to be one for profit, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Kinda? <laughs> it's on this technicality that our lady gets caught <laughs> and what oh, she is, no. the last witch of Scotland. So speaking of like witchcraft trials in Salem and stuff like that, I remember in high school this one time, I had an English teacher who she, so we were all sitting like a circle in the classroom and she went around to each one of us and told us what our fates would have been in like the 1700s. <laughs> And so, <laughs> what kind of like clairvoyant ass? It was so weird. Mm -hmm. She should not have done that, but she was going around to people and she was like, dead, killed, alive, dead. And she gets to me and she stops and she goes, burned at the stake. <laughs> and I was the only one burned at the stake. Which is horrifying because we all know you'd be dead of your allergies before you could be like 10. <laughs> Don't be rude. It do be like that though. But yes, let's get into your witch of the week. Yes, our witch of the week who is a real person. This woman existed and was alive. We're not talking about things that might be this week. We are talking about things that are. So I thought that was a fun Ooh. little switch her up. Victoria Helen McKay Duncan. She just went by Helen Duncan for most of her life. So we're gonna use that for purposes of discussing her. She was born on the 25th of November in 18... <gasps> That's my sister's birthday. 97. In 1897. Not in 1897, <laughs> 1998. Um, she was also born in Callender, Perthshire. She was the daughter of Archibald McFarlane. Shout out to Emma's cat. <laughs> My cat's name is Archibald Pickles Fireball. Archie Pickles Fireball, basically. <laughs> I could explain it, but it would take a while. I'll leave that a mystery. <laughs> And he worked as a slater, which is basically somebody who puts slates on roofs, which I'm sure is riveting work. Her mother was Isabella Rattray, a very strict Presbyterian. So Helen was kind of a riot before she even became an infamous medium and witchy practitioner. She was known to spook fellow students on the playground by behaving hysterically and handing out prophecies that sometimes foretold the death of other pupils, yes. which her very religious family, they didn't love that so much. I'm sure that they didn't. Imagine an eight-year-old on the playground going up to somebody on the monkey bars and is like, I can see you cracking your neck if you stay on those another second longer. Seven days. <laughs> exactly. Just doing, like, she was just doing creepy shit for the hell of it. I love her. I think we would have gotten along. Mm -hmm. That's definitely the kind of kid I was. Oh, yeah. After school, she worked at Dundee Royal Infirmary and married Henry Duncan, who was a cabinet maker and a wounded war veteran in 1916. Henry was a apparently very supportive of his wife's supposed paranormal talents, which makes him a pretty cool guy in my books. Oh yeah. Helen quickly became a mother of six and was working in a bleach factory, which would have been the end of the story if she weren't such a boss ass bitch. Or a boss ass witch. Oh shit, she did that. Helen started performing seances in 1926. 
She offered visitors the chance to talk to deceased loved ones and commune with spirits from the other side with the help of her spiritual guide named Peggy. She was especially famous for being able to produce ectoplasm from her mouth, which she claimed helped the dead talk through her. Observers stated that when Helen opened her mouth, a substance, which she claimed was the ectoplasm, would form at the tip of her tongue and gradually grow until it engulfed the medium's entire body. So, very cool, but as always with cool women doing cool powerful things, people felt the need to reveal that she was a liar and a phony because they can't let people have nice things. No, never. We can't, especially not women who own their own business. Women don't deserve rights. (laughs) Okay, Donald. (laughs) Okay, 45, (laughs) Mr. President. During a seance in 1928, a photographer, Harvey Murkaff, took flash photos of Duncan in order to reveal that she was a phony. You never take flash photos. That's always rule number one. That's how you learn your flaws. Mm -hmm. So the things he captured included a paper mache doll draped in an old sheet and touted as a spirit. In 1931, the London Spiritualist Alliance examined Duncan's practices and concluded that she was fraudulent. The ectoplasm, they claimed, was nothing more than a parlor trick in which Helen would ball up cheesecloth and regurgitate it. Ooh, that's still badass. Still a talent. Harry Price, the physical researcher from the London Spiritualist Alliance, was given a piece of ectoplasm, which was stolen from one of her seances, which he sent to a chemist who discovered the substance was nothing more than egg whites and a mixture of other earthly chemicals. I cannot believe there's a physical researcher for the London Spiritualist Alliance. Like, that's... I mean, they were obsessed with spiritualism. The spiritualism movement was Mm -hmm. fucking crazy. My sister and I always talk about how if we were born during the spiritualism movement, we would have made mad bank doing what it seems like Helen does, Mm -hmm. which is being fake mediums. Being fake mediums. Because I look spooky. She looks a lot more innocent and nice than I do, but we still have that kind of Victorian ghostly pallor and we think that we'd just be able to reel them in. Yeah, you two could really run up a racket there. So psychologist William McDougall attended two different seances and he agrees with the charges of fraudulent behavior on account of him noticing rubber gloves filled with air that would be used as ghostly hands reaching from the wall and under the table to touch patrons. Mm. So they had rubber gloves attached to like little hoses that filled them up with air during point so they'd like brush against you and you'd felt like ghostly oh, fingers. That is so smart. That's an incredible parlor trick. And he also saw photographs from magazines that would be used as faces for the spirits that would talk to patrons. During a seance on January 6th, 1933 in Edinburgh, a little girl named Peggy, which is the name of her spirit guide if you remember correctly, entered the room. A client, Asan Mall, turned the lights on to reveal that the girl was a mannequin in a draped sheet. The police were called and Helen Duncan was fined 10 euros. Aww. She could have just used one of her six children. Oh my god, you're so right. <laughs> she had the option, girl. She had many options. Another, I guess you could call it technique, was that Helen suffered frequent nosebleeds. It was suggested this was another hiding place for her ectoplasm, but I'm certain that blood gushing from someone's nose really adds to the authenticity of a seance. Mm -hmm. So Helen's been, you know, running a racket, holding fraudulent Mm -hmm. seances, which are really, she was doing her best and she was doing the most to give people a good experience. She was giving people a good time. She was making bank. Mm -hmm. I see no issues. Yeah. Well, she didn't really get into too much legal trouble until the Second World War. And this is where things start to get very unfortunate for Duncan and her medium psychic abilities. Helen, no! This, it's so fucking funny. It's its just really a series of unfortunate things that happened to Helen. And she was just kind of, she said the wrong thing at the wrong time. Mm. So in November 1941, Helen held a seance at Portsmouth in the middle of the Second World War. During this seance, a spirit of a sailor materialized and claimed that the HMS Barham had sunk. In actuality, the HMS Barham had sunk, but the wartime government had only told the families of the soldiers in strict confidence. The loss of 861 British soldiers was being kept a national secret, one Helen Duncan had inadvertently guessed. This led to a formal investigation by the Navy as her revealing the secret was a matter of national security. Oh man, Helen. 
<laughs> so she's like, uh, yeah, there's a ghost spirit because like we're in a ship town. And she was like, oh, this ship sank. And it did. Shit. And she wasn't supposed to know about that. Shit. Bad, bad choice, Hells. Two lieutenants attended a seance on January 14th in 1944, one of whom, a Lieutenant Worth, claimed to be appalled by Duncan's activities as one of the figures brought forth during the seance claimed to be his aunt. Worth had no deceased aunt, and there was another figure claiming to be his sister who was also very much alive and well. Ooh, that's pretty damning. Yeah. Lieutenant Worth reported Duncan to the police, and on January 19th of the same year, the police ran an undercover operation at another of Duncan's seances. As they attempted to apprehend Duncan, she disappeared, but was later found posing as a ghost in a white sheet. She was then swiftly arrested. This is icon behavior. She's <laughs> It's like in those cartoons where somebody's got a smoke bomb and they go, what the hell? And they disappear. So they're like, where's the ghost lady? And then they see like a moving sheet and they're like, Helen. Helen, you did it again. And she's like, you caught me. Oopsie. I guess I go to jail now. It's very uh, Scooby-Doo when they finally yes. unmask. <laughs> it wasn't a ghost. It was Helen Duncan in a sheet after all. So Helen Duncan was prosecuted for staging fake seances under Section 4 of the Witchcraft Act of 1735. This criminalized those who pretended to exercise or use any kind of witchcraft, sorcery, enchantment, or conjuration, or to undertake to tell fortunes, or pretend from her or his skill or knowledge in any occult or crafty science to discover where or in what manner any goods or chattels supposed to have been stolen or lost may be found. This law basically says she'd be in a lion bitch. <laughs> she don't know shit. <laughs> Helen was convicted of being a fake and was sentenced to nine months in jail. Jeez. The Witchcraft Act of 1735 had not been enacted for more than a century, but because of this case, the act was finally repealed in 1951. Three years later, a formal act of parliament officially recognized spiritualism as a religion. Wow. So they didn't like her so much for being a national security breach and committing fake seances that they enacted a centuries old witchcraft trial to send her to jail because she pissed off people in the Navy during World War II. That's so fucking cool though. Mm -hmm. Good for her, but also sad for her. But can you imagine like getting to jail and they're like, what are you in for? And she's like, witchcraft. witchcraft. Big dick energy. Largest of dick energy. Enormous. It kind of reminds me of, you know, when like you see like a really weird sign mm -hmm. that's like, warning, do not lick the fence. <laughs> there is a very specific story behind that. Mm -hmm. But Helen going down for witchcraft is way better than licking a fence. She didn't actually go down for witchcraft. She went down for fraudulent witchcraft. Can you imagine that trial? A witch trial. It'd be a real witch trial. It's literally, no, no, no. It's a, you're a fake witch trial. It's a fake trial. witch trial. It's the opposite of a witch trial. That's bonker Tony, man. Like imagine being a lawyer and it's like, uh, this is your defendant, Helen Duncan. <laughs> and shit. What did she do with her mouth? There's ectoplasm and spirit. She was vomiting egg whites. <laughs> I don't know how to defend this. And also, if she was a real medium, she would have known that she would have been sent she to jail. Known. She should have hushed up about that sink and ship. <laughs> she really should have. That's what, that's what got her. That's what sunk her ship. Oh, very good. Thank you. Yeah. Helen Duncan died in 1956 at the age of 59 from natural causes. It's pretty early. Yeah, she was... Kind of known to be morbidly obese and <laughs> just not a very healthy person. That, after, I mean, after six kids? That was not the picture I had of her in my head. Decades after her death, her descendants and supporters have continued to campaign for a posthumous pardon of all witchcraft charges for Helen Duncan. They claim that she wasn't a fake. Really? So they want her charges dropped because they claim that she did real stuff sometimes. Again, once again, it's the opposite of what normally happens where people are trying mm -hmm. to prove that she was a witch instead yeah. of trying to prove that she wasn't a witch. She made her money the way she made her money by doing witchcraft, which she's been doing since she was a child. Sure, some of it's fake, but you know, you can't, you can't bat a hundred every time. Just because a ghost happens to actually be a mannequin doesn't mean you're not a real witch. It just means you're doing a little pizzazz, a, a the pizzazz. old razzle dazzle. She was giving them the razzle dazzle and I respect her for it. So we can debate whether or not she was actually a witch. All you want, all I'm saying, is that she knew the ship sank and 
she had so many people come through her parlors and very few did not believe her. Mm -hmm. So are you arguing that she was a witch? I'm arguing that she made some stupid decisions, but <laughs> people also just hate women. And while girls want to have fun, the patriarchy says, but what if we could arrest you for witchcraft? Hmm. What if instead of allowing you to not harm anyone and have a business, mm -hmm. we put you in jail? And it's crazy because this is like the 20th century. Yeah, not that long ago. Like, my grandmother was born when yeah, this was happening. Too. Which is bonker town that they bonker charged Tony. this woman with fraudulent witchcraft in the 1950s. I would believe that she could be a real witch, but like you said, putting on a show for it because maybe being a real medium is kind of boring because you just know stuff and you're like, hey, I know about your dead, blah, blah, blah. Sorry. But it's more interesting if you have ectoplasm eking out of you. People are paying for the show. They're not paying for, you know, this old woman with her six children to be like, listen up, son. Your mom, she's not going to tell you where the family gold is buried because you were kind of a shit to her. Mm -hmm. Like, she's going to, like, have voices and, like, give you a show and ectoplasm mm -hmm. and there's hands reaching from the walls. And uh, respect. As a theatrical respect. girl, respect. She was a performer. She was a performer. And maybe. A witch. Just maybe. So her family has continued um, multiple times to get charges of witchcraft dropped. Um, these petitions have been rejected in 2001, 2008, and 2012. So there's a website and online petition which you too can sign. I want to sign it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sign it. We got to support our witchy sisters. If she's not a real witch, I still feel like she should be pardoned for being a fake witch. It, it's just unfair. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, who are you really hurting by pretending to be a witch? No one. Literally no one. Mm -hmm. Like I could think of so many other things that you could get put in jail for pretending like that there's not a national pandemic. Yeah. I would throw someone in jail for that. Yeah. There's a very uh, certain person I would throw in jail for lying to people about there being a pandemic going on in the country that they were president of. A very orange person. <laughs> Yeah, and he didn't even have ectoplasm come yeah. out of his mouth. Come on, he didn't bad even performance. Put on a show. I would say that he didn't have ectoplasm coming out of his mouth because he was wearing a mask. Mm, he wasn't wearing a mask. He wasn't wearing a mask. Um, this is all to say that Emma and I urge you to go out and vote this Please election. Vote. It's very important. It is extremely important. Please vote. Even just to spite him, he deserves rejection. Support Helen Duncan, though. Support Helen Duncan and support your local democracy. Mm -hmm. But that's about all I have to tell you about The Last Witch of Scotland, which I think is a I, very cool title to have. I think it's an amazing title to have. I would love to have that title. I would not, however, love to go down for fake witchcraft. Nine months. Nine months. That's a long time. But yeah, that's all we have for this week. What do we have for next week? So Zelda and I like to take on a lot of... Um, slightly lesser known creatures and stories and witches or vampires. We want to tell you guys things that you don't hear from other podcasts. But next podcast, I'm going to tell you about something you do hear from other podcasts. But in a way that's a little oh, more I'll veil do. flare. Yes. I'm going to be talking about the very famous American legend of the Bell Witch. I have not heard of the Bell Witch, but I also am less American than you. This is true. But it's one of the most famous, if not the most famous, American haunting of all time. I would say it's more famous than Amityville, but it's older, and that might be why people don't know about it as much. But it was huge at the time, and there's so many reports of it, and mm -hmm. like it's very interesting. It's like a ghost, poltergeist, witch, all mashed up, although not always horrible. Oh, For one person, it was not horrible, but... I'll let you guys find that out next week. Unless you already know, because you might know the story. But still tune in, because I'm going to be fun when I tell it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm taking it back to America. Across the pond. And it's going to be a good time. Yeah, I'm excited. But for now, we're done. So we'll see you next time. Across the, the veil. veil. Yeah, we got to say it together, finally. Because we're here at the same place. Whee!